Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or cop, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, our last live show for the season before we take a break during the colder months. But we'll still be here every Tuesday night for you as this season is repeated over the next three months. Tonight, a special guest joins us in the studio. We get an update on Barramundi in Hazelwood. We talk natives with Trelly, big Chinooks in Parambit, all that and plenty more. So let's get into it with a big welcome to the man who travels by kayak, Adam Ring. Welcome, Ed's. Thanks, Dave, and uh, hey, Anzac Day. It's, we haven't done one on Anzac Day before, have we? We haven't. On, no. no, so no. this has been pretty cool. Good it's job. It's a to Tuesday the, this year. <laughs> that's right. To and, all um, the, uh, the diggers out there that have looked after us over the years. Uh, now, we've got a special guest tonight. I'm not going to steal your thunder. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what we do when we've got a special, special guest, Dave. What do we do? We bust out the good shoes. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Actually, worn yeah, shoes. Very good. <laughs> very good. <laughs> hey, it's also a big good welcome work. to the man all the way from Shepparton, <laughs> Stephen Victor Trelfer. Welcome, Trelly. Thank you very much, Dave. Same so shoes. Socks on as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always yeah. socks on. Even yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, I put yeah. my right one on first, yeah. unlike yourself. But I always put the left one on first. Yeah, so that's yeah. So that's <laughs> all How good. How do you know that? I just things stick in my head. You know, all right. And a very special welcome to the Executive Director of Fisheries Victoria, Travis Dowling. Welcome, Trav. Great to be here, Dave. Shoes? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, do have I was going to actually <laughs> roll up the uh, pants too and do the no sock thing. Nah. Uh, nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Don't do it. Didn't know I got last. Now, mate, we're going to pump you for information tonight. Fantastic. Last show, last live show for the season mm. before we're back in August. So we're going to pump you for a lot of information. Um, boys, let's just start with how good the fishing is from... Uh, and we're going to talk about big schnooks at Parambit later on, but uh, the trouts, the Murray cod, the yep. yellow belly, the barrels have turned up at Portland. It's they good fishing have. all over, isn't yep. it? Swordfish out of Lake's entrance, which has been a big one over the last yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. That's a yeah. developing fishery that's getting more and more popular. You guys take much notice in that one, Trev? Like swordfish, well, in fact, um, it, it, people are starting to say game fishing capital of Victoria yeah. already. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're uh, saying that. I, yeah. I mean, you've Absolutely. got Portland for the tuna, but yeah. you've got Lakes Entrance now for uh, a, a very big mako coming in the yeah, other day, and, and it's not the only one, yeah. but plenty of swords coming in. Well, you can start to you know, launch a pretty good case about game fishing all along the Victorian coastline. Yeah. And one of the things that we're talking about at the moment is fads, and whether or not we place some fads out to really target some of the re you know, really good pelagics at, you know, off places like Marlow yeah. and Mallacoota. And um, we've got a couple of people in the office who are very keen on them. Yeah. And with yeah. uh, with the Bastion Point boat ramp now at Mallacoota, and yeah. that access coming in there and being able to get out to the shelf, and what's happening with the barrels and uh, you know, at Portland and being caught at Warrnambool, mm. and, you know, even been caught, you know, you know, fish coming out of the rip, really good tuna out of there. Yeah. So, but there's every chance that with those warm currents, that, yeah. that we're going to see dolphin fish, and, yep. and so those fads, you know, strategically placed off the coast, yeah. could be absolutely brilliant for a new fishery like so fad, dolphin yeah. fish. Fad for the guys out there, like from where yeah. I come from, what's a fad? Yeah, fish aggregation device. Yep. So I think a discus, I think a discus put it on the yep. water, and um, you know, kingies, whether it's mahi mahi, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. Yeah, dolphin, yeah, dolphin yeah, fish. I've actually fished them yeah. and, and been really successful on them. So yeah. mm. uh, that was New Guinea, but I, I would love to see them down here. Yeah. Mm. Been, yeah, great. Yeah. Folks, let's have a look at, at what's been caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano, providing reliable, trustworthy, quality fishing gear for your enjoyment. Now, one species we didn't mention in that intro uh, because there's so much good fishing <laughs> is the old King George Whiting. And have a look at this crack of 44 centimetres caught down at Coronella by Sharon Cotso. I don't think any relation to Franco, but uh, <laughs> but oh, that's a crack of fish, isn't it, boys? Yeah, it's just beautiful. Have a look at that. Yeah, and, yeah. and we're seeing more and more, I reckon, in the last, what would you say, last month? Yeah. yeah mm. it's, reports. it's kind of turned on, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, and the average yeah. size reports. is... Yeah. Massive. I know we've spoken about it mm. for yeah, the last few weeks, yeah, but yeah. the average size is the best it's been all year, yeah. really. I, I, yeah. I, in fact, the other day, I think it was during Easter, there was only one angler at a safety beach who didn't catch a whiting, Trav. Were you <laughs> yeah. down the safety <laughs> beach? Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, <Okay. laughs> 
Uh, Claudia Seaweed. Uh, okay. Also yeah. in, uh, stay, <laughs> staying in Western yeah, yeah. Port, Sandy Point. Um, Phil Shannon got down there and got some cracker whiting in the deep and a big snapper. Have a look at that. That's, 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 That's not yeah. a bad bag to take out. That's it. Yeah. Lovely bag, isn't it? Well, a nice table size like snapper anyway. So, a snapper. Um, yeah. That's pretty good. Staying in Western Port, the gummy sharks are on fire as well. And sorry, all those people that did send us in photos, we just can't get them all on the TV tonight. But Bob, he got out 11 kilos of gummy shark. Thank you very much in the Western entrance. Yeah, Bobby here. Yeah. We haven't seen him yeah. for a few weeks. I know he yeah. popped up uh, earlier in the season getting gummies regularly down the entrance. So good to see Bobby back on the water. And how, how good's the gummy shark fishing mm. at the moment? I, I did help yeah. a bloke um, launch his boat the other day or retrieve his boat, and, uh, and I got pretty wet. And he did tell me about how he just bagged out on gummy sharks. So that's just fantastic. <laughs> I might have coughed a few times. I <laughs> feel <Phillips>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think he heard me. I tell, you, I tell you what, and, and I would say that Port Phillip is fishing every good as bit as Western Port, yeah, but definitely. number four uh, catch of the week is Ben McDonald with a beautiful elephant fish at the corals. Ooh. Have a look at that. That's and a fair old yeah, that is is a nice size fish. fish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've had a few of those now. It's yeah. good yeah. to see this time of year. They're here. So. Maybe six foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a couple of carryovers from Easter as well. We couldn't quite fit in last week, boys. But uh, Dusty Loney headed up to Forster, uh, Forster on the New South Wales coast, uh, obviously with mum and dad. 72 centimetre dusky flathead. That's oh, a cracker oh, fish. Geez, that is. You have to be a good um, fisherman to get those. Yeah. And I know we don't normally don't have New South Wales uh, yeah, that's all right. fish, but it's still good. Yeah, when the Victorians absolutely. go over there, they're allowed to come yeah. back and you know. Um, now these are a cracker. The, these next two fish. Oh, I just yeah. at these ones. Uh, it's yeah. awesome. I, we sort of saw them late last week, yeah. and Mick and Sam, and this is this is how ridiculous, not ridiculous in a bad way, in a good way. How ridiculous Lake Tyres is fishing at the moment. Yeah. Mick and Sam went down there over Easter, land base, set up the tent Look on the that. shoreline, yep. and we're just fishing with prawns, rod right in a is rod hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah lean up against that. a stick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know whether that's Mick or Sam, but. One yeah. of them has got an 86 centimetre and the other one, an 88 oh, centimetre. Oh, I think that. Sam yeah. got the 88, but I don't know which one's which. But anyway, that one's a bit camouflaged, that bloke. It is. Um, but how's that? Oh, Off the just, bank, yeah. prawns as bait. Yeah, Tra but, uh, Trav, best season ever for big flatties at tyres? Oh, look, undoubtedly. Look, and uh, you know, again, apologies to my friend Jeff Fraser, who uh, works with the water minister. He's watching this at the moment, again, throwing things at the TV, because he just <laughs> loves lake tyres. Yeah. I mean... Anglers supported the slot size down there. All right, yeah. They supported yeah. it. You know, and people talk about anglers sometimes as you know, wanting to take everything out. They said, no, put a slot size on the flatties yeah. and everything that we thought would happen has just yeah. come through. And yeah. Just, yeah. just very quickly, yeah. hands up in the room if you've caught an 85 centimetre flathead this year. Oh, nice oh, work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> very well done. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Charlie, what's your nice. yeah. I'm going oh, soon. Yeah. I'm going soon, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. head over to the, to the freshwater yeah. scene and uh, some lovely Murray cod around at the moment. Warren Gaylard mm. Trelly, tell the story, 103 centimetres. Yeah, now Warren's, uh, Warren catches actually a lot of fish, but he does put in a lot of time. Uh, I know because he wrecks a few electric motors by running them over the water. <laughs> 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 yeah. Ah, I've broken another electric motor. Good for business. <laughs> so, happens. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, but he does put in a lot of time. That one was taken on a surface lure. Uh, oh, yeah, you? so he does a lot of surface lure fishing. Yeah. Take you know it's a good cod when you've got to cuddle it. When you're going to get that's right. That. When it cuddles you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. Put me back. I'm going to eat you. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that was a great, great fish. All right, right. All righty. And uh, lucky last catch of the week, Mary Trelfel. Any relation, Trelly? Ah, yes. This is my uh, lovely wife here. Have a look at that oh, That's a nice fish. little cod. That yeah. is a cracker. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that was that's a good one. Now, where was that? Had a good guide. Uh, that was up uh, the Murray River in behind Nathalie in the, in the Barna Forest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. And uh, caught on an old mate, little one of the green, the bright green ones, which has been oh, really great guns up that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're getting so many reports in that particular area, guys going up catching you know, 8, 9, 10, mm. 12, 15 cod you know, over a weekend. So, yeah. Now, nice little fish. I would ask you what that cod was caught on, yep. but I won't because Mary's just sitting up in the background there. <laughs> yeah. and, um, there's Mary. And Mary, <laughs> what? Mary, you got to yell it out. What lure did you catch it on? I'm pretty sure it was a codger. A codger, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she's wrong, Charlie. Uh, Mary's right because the guy, Graham Sanders, who makes the codger, designed the old mate lure. There so you Mary's go. Correct. Fantastic. Yeah, no, oh, good. Sorry to bash you, Mary. Mary, but it's all good. <laughs> 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 if you'd like to send in your pick of catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pick to info at ifish.com.au. And coming up on Talking Fishing Product of the Week, some pretty fancy gear coming your way right after this. Talking Fishing We know what you'd rather be doing 
We know what you really got in mind We know you'd rather be out fishing And today's the day you're gonna wear the line Cause every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away of the week brought to you by Tackle World Talking Fishing Welcome back to Talking Fishing and product of the week this week we touched on earlier in the show how good the game fishing scene's been in Victoria at the moment and it's not just in Victoria the south coast of New South Wales and pushing up further north has been really good too so I thought we'd show the love a little bit and we haven't done some game gear for a long time so I want to show you some of the latest and greatest getting around at the moment and I'm going to open with possibly the greatest piece of fishing machinery I think I've ever seen in the 10 years I've been working in the industry. This is called a Talica by Shimano. The reason this is, uh, I, th I think, the best piece of gear ever created by Shimano is we thought in the game fishing scene, and up until quite recently it was, Tiagra was the finest. It was built for line class. You can tell it's the best because it hasn't been upgraded and touched for so long because it just couldn't get better. So instead of touching a great thing, they created a greater thing in this Talica. This is the biggest model, a Talica 50. Very, very narrow. Now that's done for a reason, Charlie. Yep. Um, now, me personally, I've never done much fishing with this sort of gear, but yeah. with the little fishing I've done with it, I know the big reels are very heavy and very wide, so they start to roll and fishing can be uncomfortable. They've yep. really narrowed this up. Power is absolutely extreme because they're actually built to fish braid. Now, we're in the middle of, uh, I guess, Broadville swordfish is a species at the moment for game fishermen. And it's all about line capacity, so fishing braid is a must. Mm. And it's all about power and control. And this reel allows us as game fishermen to get the most out of all three of those yeah. bits and pieces. So what These are something else. line capacity on this type of well, reel? Well, with an 80-pound braid, uh, well, actually, I'm going to talk about some line later on, but say a 130-pound hollow braid, yep. you can get 600 metres of braid with a 100-metre 37-kilo top shot. Yeah. Mm. That's unheard that. of in so that You're going to be able to get down to any swordfish, let it have a run. Yes, and, and still not worry about getting spooled. I was talking to Paul mm. about size of the line because I think he prefers an 80 yep. just to get that extra capacity on. Mm. He had 130 on one Correct. and ran out of line. Got to the pin and they chased the fish and they got him in. Well, when you're but, dropping a yeah. bait to in excess of 500 metres yeah. plus a fish that could be 350 yeah. kilos much, yeah, no <laughs> plus... Either. And an active mm. fish at that. Mm. Yeah. Um, but the power on these reels mm. is something else. Mm. So that's the tell. Like a sport and go down to 30 pound and put it on <laughs> three right. kilometres. Well, that's it. Why yeah. not? If you've never had a, a play with a Talica 50, you've got to get in and you play with to. it. Come into a tackle shop and have a play with it because it's the mm. bling. It is. It's men's bling. It's, yeah, like, yeah. It is. it's like buying your missus a one carat diamond, yeah. isn't it? Like it's, it's, it's Tiffany's. It's that's better it. than just gold. Yeah, yeah. it's Tiffany's. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Is. Yeah. it is. Exactly. Put it in a little blue bag. Have you had a breakfast at Tiffany's? It's fishing porn. That's good song. It's fishing porn, isn't it? That's. That's the Talica. Um, the other thing that's made its way into the game fishing scene is deep drop fishing. Now, we touched yep. on it with the Talica, but have a look at this bad boy. We've had this up in the shop for a little bit now on a rod, and the amount of people that stop and look at this thing because they just don't know they exist. Mm. This is an electric fishing reel. This is a Beastmaster 9000. I hope I got that right. Yeah, it is. From Shimano. We've seen electric reels quite a bit over the last few years, but we're starting to get to the point where they're becoming that relevant in our market that we're starting to see the worldwide quality. What, what separates this reel from the rest? It runs a brushless motor. Now, very, very quickly, because we don't have enough time, but on some of these electric reels, as the pressure gets so great, you, these are for blue eye dropping, okay? Yeah. Sword yeah. fishermen are using them, but it's just to retrieve the bait because you're d deep dropping in that yeah. depth of water. But you could have, say, 80 pound braid. It could be in four to 500 metres of water mm. with, say, five or six kilos of lead to get to the bottom, plus two 10 to 20 kilo blue wire hanging off the, off the end. Mm. That's a lot of pressure. Now, what they're designed to do is, so you, so you can't physically burn these out, the yep. motor will turn itself off if it starts to overheat. Mm. 
that's a bit of an issue when you've got two 20 kilo <laughs> fish sitting at 100 metres yeah. and you can't wind it up. Yeah. And a big mako circling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. Yeah. So they, what these Realize reels do with these new motors, it takes a hell of a lot longer <laughs> to overheat at pressure. So therefore, a hell of a lot more comfortable. If you want to know more about these reels, please drop into your local and have a look because they are something else and they're becoming very, very relevant in this day and age in fishing tackle and deep dropping because the best eating fish live in the deepest possible water. Yeah, and that one is pretty much the commercial end of it is. quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Shimano. We've used mm -hmm. those on those Ruby Snapper and things like that at yeah. great depths. And mm -hmm. They should come with a stubby holder because you can just... Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't touch it. Yeah, how's that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Right. Have another so drink that, and just wait for them to come up. They're great. So that's the Beastmaster. Very quickly, uh, hollow braid is something that's also taking the game fishing world by storm as we, f as we fish deep water. There's not a hell of a lot to say about it apart from the fact the reason for hollow core attaching a leader is flawless there is no knots, so there is no weakness, and it's almost impossible to pull it out. It acts like a really long piece of, a, like a Chinese finger trap. Mm -hmm. You will not pull that line out unless basically you cut it off. Mm. So you can you can attach mono leaders to braid without tying a knot, and it's great. Yeah. So we're starting to see that come into really the game good. fishing scene, um, and you will see more of it in yeah. the future as this gets more popular. A lot of times, just rough up your mono before you poke it in. Yeah, just so it and bites it just a little really, bit. Really, really grabs it. Um, I've got a couple of rods to show you too. Uh, first up, uh, we all, we're all familiar with the Therese uh, rods, Shimano by Shimano. They've been around for a long time. We now see a bent butt rod. The reason for this, um, there's no point fishing that, de that, that depth of water and the size of these fish with a straight butt, because it will hurt you a lot. You could be on the rods. Well, we had a report this yeah. week of a guy fighting a swordfish for 23 and a half hours yeah. out of Lake's entrance. Wow. It's a pending yeah. record, so it's, it's a big stuff. 300 kilos, kilos on 15 yeah. kilo. Like, it's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. But um, what sets these so apart... So bent butt and fully rolled to That's right. Yeah. So carbon, yeah. carbon fibre butt to keep Sit the up. weight down. Massive, massive guides. The line rating on this particular rod is mm. 80 pound to unlimited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's <laughs> free heavy application. Yeah. 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 So pa pair yeah. that up with a Talica 50 mm. and that yeah. is just an absolute game fishing weapon. And for the electric reels, these are something very, very unique. Put this floppy in on Again. Tell me about that. Bent, bent butt, because you're supposed to leave these in the holder. Yep. Very, very short, so that when the fish are at the top, you can mm. grab the line without leaning too mm. far over the boat with a bit of swell, mm. and a swivel tip. What that does, that is a roller tip, and what happens if the fish takes off to the left or the right and that swivel tip doesn't move, because you're not actively fighting the fish from a normal rod position, you can't mm. follow the fish no matter where it goes, that tip just swivels That's slightly clever, so that yeah. you're yeah. Not, your braid <coughs> or your mono is not mm. rubbing on the actual uh, guide and staying on the roller. So mm. very, mm. very clever. You wouldn't um, even need to put your stubby down, Trelly. No, that's it. Just hit go that's and it. Just put the electric it. reel. Yeah. You wouldn't even need to, but not until you see that fish <laughs> just down. And then they automatically turn off if you see them properly. Yeah. 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 So they, this is all very, very unique gear. Please pop into the store and have a chat to us about it because it's specific, but it will make your life so much easier when it comes to game fishing. Yeah. Very good. Mm. Well done. Bit of uh, fancy gear, like Very I said fancy earlier. Gear, so, yeah. uh, let's get into some of the topics we want to talk to you about, Trav. Fantastic. Let's kick it off with Barramundi in Hazelwood because, uh, yeah. you know, I, I think it's probably gone a little bit mm. quiet. Everyone's gone, let's just see what happens. Mm. What's happening? Tell well, us about it. I want to say it's been a huge success, Dave. Like, yeah. um, what we know from the economic reports that have come out of there is that, you know, nearly seven to $800,000 has actually gone into La Trobe Valley from the Barramundi fishery. Mm. And more than that for me, like I've had emails, I know you've had emails from people saying, you know, I never thought I'd get the opportunity to actually take my, my son, daughter fishing for Barra. Uh, now, what's fantastic is, you know, we've taken that chance, we've taken the risk with the support of the overwhelming majority of wreck fishers in Victoria mm. who love it and they love the fact that we're willing to get out there and break new barriers. The Barra is still alive, uh, the water's still okay, and we're actually, I was talking to the Barramundi farmer, Boris, if he's watching tonight, Boris, g'day, out of Werribee, but he was saying that there are people doing some more work with some um, some other barra farms overseas where barra over there are really starting to operate now at 15 to 16 degrees in yeah. temperature, wow, and yeah. which is really exciting for mm. us because we thought that once the Hazelwood Barra were down to sort of 17 or 18, they'd really start to struggle and turn off. The Hazel, uh, the pondage is still at 22 degrees, yep. 21 degrees. Um, it's likely. So is, is, yeah. that, is, is the main pond still staying at that? from the the underground water that's keeping that warm enough because 22 I'd say is a little bit above 
what yeah. a normal lake would be at this time of year? Yeah, I just don't think we've had the cold days yet. Yeah, like, no. So it still had that warmth from when the power mm. station was going. Yeah. You know, come July, August, it'll probably drop down to sort of that 13, 14, 15 degrees. Yeah. But the barra will be able to get up to where that warmer water is. And fingers crossed what will happen is they will winter up there. Uh, and there are a lot of them in there because most people you know, caught and released. 7,000. Yep. And so what will happen come, hopefully, December, January next year, is someone will be trolling around with a, you know, a little nosy or they'll have a gold bomber out the back. And I'm, fingers crossed, they'll get smashed by a metre plus barra. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and people will get down there. They'll know the barra out and about again, exploring the lake. Um, it'll be fantastic. Now, there's still a lot of work being done, isn't there, there on is. setting yeah. up the fishery to the, I guess, the new way it is with the hot yeah. water. Um, is there areas that you're still trying to work on access? Are you allowed to talk about that? Yeah, we're working really closely with Engie at the moment. And, uh, and look, all credit to Anthony Forster and our team who's working with Engie and working with Latrobe City Council. Uh, you know, for people that are out there watching, there's a, there's a bit of a barrage. If you think about Shady Camp up in the Northern Territory, any other water barrage, uh, you know, we're having to uh, look at ways to get access through that barrage. So we're looking at things like a fish ladder mm. and uh, how we could work a fish ladder through there so the barra can move back and forth through where that warmer water is back into the larger lake. And look, uh, you know, our, our, we're, we're very confident and we've got some good Arthur Roller scientists who are uh, assisting us with um, you know, some work around that barrage um, that we're going to be able to get there. Alrighty, so at the moment, no fish kills. You guys are monitoring it. Yeah. Um, water's still sitting at 22. Uh, fish passage, yep. hopefully, to get the fish up to that hot water. Can, can I quickly um, just, sure. just mm -hmm. say, good. people are still catching fish out of there. We're kind of making it sound like it's yeah. over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. They've, yeah. they've no, spread it, out and you can catch them. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. They, I think yeah. they needed a bit of an adjustment. When that power yeah. station first turned off and there was a step change in the water oh, temperature, definitely. Mm. But it's like sitting, any fish, mm. they, That's right. they yeah. stop. And we've been sitting at this sort of yeah. 21, 22 for quite a while. Yeah. Though. Those mm. fish will acclimatise yeah. that. It is not too cold to catch them. The only thing making it harder is they're spread out. Yeah, that's right. So keep having a look. And look, the tilapia and the cichlids are still there as well so yeah. it's fantastic so the bait's still there yeah. and the barra is still there yeah uh, so the biggest one we've seen is 85 yeah it's not yeah. going to be too long before they're a meter Absol look, absolutely i yeah. mean they, they got from 30 to 85 incredibly quickly yeah, yeah. that's right you know yeah. they will be at a meter by next summer what's yeah. the prize for a meter yeah well we'll work on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. up yeah. next fisheries news straight from the horse's mouth or mm. travis's mouth anyway see you mm. soon on talking fishing Talking fishing. Good morning, spotters. Stephanie speaking. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. Uh, welcome back to Talking Fishing. Now we're going to get straight into this news, <laughs> Trav. Uh, yep. Plenty to talk about. And yep. let's kick it off with uh, a, a huge success story, yep. I reckon, is the Chinooks in, in um, a couple... You've got them in a couple of crater lakes now? Yep, yep. Paramid yep. and Bull and Mera. Yep. And I think we actually put some into Belfield Lake as well. Yep. And uh, I think we put a bounty out there on... It's like our um, Mulloway that we put into Lake Tyres. You know, any yeah, okay. confirmed catch, we, we are going to insist upon an iPhone photo. Yeah. Because uh, we've heard a few reports. But, but you've got a Samsung. That'll help you. Knock so uh, you will be fine as well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they're in um, they're in Parambit, they're in Bullamarai, they're in Belfield. Yeah. And There's some uh, cracker fish coming out of yeah. Parambi. Yeah, and so people are going down there fishing for reddies. Yeah. They're getting their 40 or 50 reddies, which are really good, you know, kilo, two kilo reddies they're yeah. getting out of there. <laughs> and they're seeing these big shadows under the reddies on the sounder and they're dropping baits down yeah. and running into, you know, 15 to 18 pound Chinook salmon. What sort of bait? Uh, blue bait. Yeah, strips of blue bait. Serious? Dropping, yeah, yeah, dropping pilchards down there. Yeah. They'll snap a gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so those water? Chinooks, how old are they? How long, how, and how long have they been in the lake? Uh, well, they've been going for the last four years. Yeah. So, because um, there was a real like, like um, yeah. there was some some problems with breeding yeah. in, in snobs. It's very diplomatic, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, and, yeah. and so that got that got resolved. Yeah. you've been stocking them for four years. Yeah. 
So you're saying that's a four-year-old fish? Yeah, that uh, size. Absolutely. Like, and some of them might even be younger than that. The growth rates are phenomenal, and yeah. they're not. They're some of them can be uh, quite short-lived, and mm. they they get in there. They just chomp, chomp, chomp on uh, on the redfin and mm. on the uh, some of the native species that are in there. They grow really, really big, and then um, if they're not caught, they end up um, you know, just knocking themselves over. Mm. So, you caught one. Uh, no, one of the few species I haven't actually done. <laughs> 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 I've got a lot of species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 sure. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah. let's move yeah. on. Um, we've spoken, not for a while, yeah. we've spoken about the $2,000 grants yeah. that are being given out to fishing clubs in mm. Victoria. So every registered fishing club is eligible for a $2,000 grant from the state government under, under target $1 million. Yep. How's that going? Oh, look, it's just going fantastic. And I've got to say, like, if you're, if you're a fishing club secretary or president out there, please put an application in. Um, Target One Million is about getting a million Victorians fishing. We're about 800,000 at the moment, and we want to see clubs grow and flourish and bring people in. So it could be honour boards, it could be new carpet, it could be, you know, come and try fishing day. And you've got to, like we've said before on the show, you've got to do a lot of scones, you've got to sell a lot of scones, you've got to cook a lot of Anzac dickies and sell them to make $2,000 if you're a club of 15, yeah. 20, mm. 30 people. But we've given out 150 grants now, which is $300,000 to clubs all across Victoria. Um, and But we know there's about 330 registered angling clubs in Victoria. So there's still 180 clubs yeah. that, that yeah. haven't yeah. applied for their $2,000. <coughs> this is $2,000 handed to you on a platter by the state government to do something in your club. 180 mm. clubs, get off your bum. Yeah, you just can't buy beer with it. No. But yeah, but, but basically, yeah. if you can do something that supports fishing, encourages fishing, the growth of fishing. Um, so what, what else can they spend their money on? A couple of examples. Oh, well look, we've had people um, buy t-shirts and, and paraphernalia for the club, people to wear down the street and get out there. We've had come and catch a carp day. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, well, we've actually just expanded it. Yeah. Um, so whereas we were just working in that sort of area about encouragement for people to come in, we've now also branched out to defibrillators. Okay, so, so that's going to... Yeah, so the that's going to... Um, bang. That's going to meet the criteria for the grants program. Absolutely, and and Dave, yeah. I can say as well that even clubs that have been successful in getting their two thousand dollar grant can yeah. actually apply also to receive a defibrillator, and we'll fund clubs getting a defibrillator. So they've already got their two thousand dollars to yep. do their honour boards or whatever they've done. Yeah, they can still apply for another two thousand dollars to get a defibrillator. That's right. Well, they, they, work with, they work well around structure, do they? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. You've actually got to be tr in, in a bit of trouble before yeah, you, uh, yeah, yeah, before yeah. they work. <laughs> but look, it's all about trying to make sure that angling clubs are a safe, encouraging, welcoming place for uh, for people to go. I there knew go. some of these clubs. A lot of the members were sort of seniors, but defibs are a bit full on, aren't they? Well, a lot of <laughs> well, I've got to say, a lot of sporting clubs these days, like yeah. they don't, you know, with even like you know, um, like. But uh, every bowls club's got one. Yeah, like, yeah that's think, what I'm yeah. saying. These fishing clubs yeah. are getting I pretty old. Number, aren't I think there's a surf life saving club. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think you have to be too long in the twos to have these around because people yeah. have got particular, you know, there are challenges and so yeah. forth. And it's a great I, I heard a story yeah. on the radio yeah. the other morning about someone had collapsed and that. And, and they said, go and get the defibrillator because yeah. it's almost yeah. something that you expect to be in a club these days. Yeah, that's right. You know? well, it actually happened out at uh, my daughter's um, soccer a couple of years ago where a young girl was about 11 collapsed mm. and they had a defibrillator in the club room and it saved a life. And yeah. Yeah, mm. like it was. You, you, yeah. You'd almost expect them to be at, a, at most sporting clubs that's now. Yeah, so yeah. You can test them at the Christmas parties. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to actually be in trouble. Oh, yeah, we do. That's yeah, well, oh, Charlie yeah, yeah, might yeah, do a yeah. nudie run with yeah, flares, yeah, yeah. trip over, yeah. and need a defibrillator. Yeah, yeah. Mate, yeah. might need one. Yeah. 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 Mm. All right, let's change the subject. Oh, right. Southern bluefin tuna, always yeah. been a little bit contentious with the <laughs> quotas on a world scale, yeah. and what is, you know, what's in store for Australia? Because it, it's one quota for the whole of Australia. Mm. There's always been this little contentious issue in the background yeah. that we don't measure recreational catch that well. Recreational's never really been recognised in that quota. Where, where's that at? Well, I'd say, Dave, to be honest, there's a bit of parochialism. I think the South Australians, to an extent, think that uh, southern bluefin tuna are their, their species. They, they stop yeah, at the border, There's a lot they? of millionaires in Port Lincoln who run yeah. a lot of tuna farms. Mm -hmm. um, now, Australia's going to get another 500 tonne through the uh, international uh, fishery uh, organisation that hand out the uh, the quota so they're saying a slight recovery in southern bluefin tuna so they're giving Australia another 500 tonnes so we'll go from about 7,000 tonnes to 7,500. There's some discussion at the moment about how that should be allocated. In Victoria we manage our tuna through strict 
bag limits and a you know per kilo limit, like in terms of how much kilo mm. you can have, and it's two fish bag limit. But there is there is this uh, uh, question about should Victoria get this 500 tonne? Should it be allocated um, to represent the, the growing catch from Portland? And I know, I know we're a little bit tongue in cheek about talking about the game fishing capital um, of Australia, but it is probably one of the only places in the world that you can catch southern bluefin tuna so close. Alrighty, good yeah. stuff. We'll keep uh, going on with some other topics, but up next, Kramer's Mailbag and plenty more right after this. Talking fishing. Make mine, make mine a Mornington. G'day, David Kramer here. I'm a massive fan of the Mazda BT50, having personally driven and owned one for more than five years now. And to tell you what, you can't beat them for an all round great ute and a great tow vehicle. Get into Mornington Mazda before the end of the month and grab yourself a run out bargain. I made mine a Mornington Mazda. Make mine, make mine a Mornington Mazda. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. <laughs> Fair bit of mail to get through this week, boys, and I might mm -hmm. get some hands with uh, a few of the answers here. Let's kick it off. Daniel Rundle writes to us, Hi there, great show. Are there any land-based spots in the northern part of the bay you can catch squid? Land-based oh, northern. Still pretty, any rock platform or any pier, basically. Mm. I know they do mm. a lot of... Um, Trav, I, I, oh, I, I don't fish up the northern well, end of the bay. What so is the northern end of the bay? Like well, a, Altona. Altona, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah we'll we'll sort of western... Do, Part yeah, of that. yeah wasn't that Geelong? Well, that w further west. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all, west. all west, isn't it? Once you get past, uh, you know, the Yarra River. Um, yeah. But yeah, along there, even you know, fishing off that, um, off the rock wall at Altona, you'll catch say, squid. All the, all yeah. the rock walls in that. Yeah, yeah. we'll have squid. There you go. Jetty, you'll have them. There you go. Mm. Williamstown Jetty, Altona. Yeah. Try yeah. them. Uh, Tracy writes to us. I'd like to know if on a boat, can you fill it any fish at sea? Uh, no, some you have to return, um, which are, uh, you know, they're listed species within the guide, and I'm going to look at you without listing them. Yeah. But there are a number that need to come back in, in full form. Whole? Yeah, in whole. I, I thought all fish all had them, to come yeah, back so, so that you could measure them. No, not all of them. There but are, you can fill it some fish. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at sea, you can. Really? Yep. Yep. I well, guess if you say so, then yeah, it no, must you be can. Right. I'll never right. pick my guide up, but you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we, we, yeah, I, that was a question without notice. I mean, yeah. ask Trelly the answer to that one, because yeah. he would have said he does it all, any, <laughs> all yeah. the time. Um, all right, boys, there's a fair bit on stingrays, because we spoke about stingrays mm. last week, and obviously there was a big, uh, a big smooth ray uh, carcass found at Rye Pier. It's Someone had knocked the wings off it, mm -hmm. and the tail and all that sort of stuff. Quite legally that you can do that so fair bit of mail and we're going to talk about that I, if you've got an opinion on stingrays we posted up a story on facebook earlier today there's uh, i know there's been a lot of comments about six thousand people have already had a look at it um so if you want to get onto the talking fishing facebook page please add your comments because we'll feed all them through to you guys at fisheries yeah. trav but um there's a few a bit of mail here so tom writes uh, to all the tough fishos who catch and kill rays in our bay geez you're so tough I'm just yeah, reading it how it is. Yes, they can be a pain. Yeah, However, since go. hearing of your disregard for the cleaners of our waters, you have made me feel horrible. Even embarrassed as a fellow fisherman, the rays are the vacuums of the bay. We have such pristine waters due to these gentle giants doing what they do best. If you want to get tough, maybe take up wrestling. <laughs> Thank you, David Kramer, for bringing the issue to light. Mm. All good. We just bring the issues to the table as they come to yeah. us. Age, uh, Adam, sorry, uh, Adam Hendrickon, he writes... I have had stingray, it's okay to eat, but that was in Malaysia. I never keep them when I'm fishing, but I think there should be a size and a bag limit. Should not stop the people from keeping one or two. So a couple of mixed reactions here. Mm. Don Culpin, he writes, uh, watching your show right now, or while the ads are on, uh, he was writing to us, so grateful that you guys are prepared to discuss and throw out their discussion on hot topics, not just put down or uphold an article in the news. We were just talking about the Ray issue uh, on board at Plover today, so he might be on a boat, I think. Ooh. I don't know the best answer on this one, but personally agree that the big rays at least deserve protection. So 
Uh, I think he's that. nailed it with that, though. He d- doesn't know the yeah, best I answer. Right. I don't yeah. think any of us do at the no. moment, and I, I think we've got to have the discussion about it. Yeah. I, I, I think he's All really... Right, we're going to hear, yeah. hear what you think mm. you should do yeah, sure. in a minute. Alan uh, writes to us, Reece Stingrays, Adam's idea of a slot limit and maybe a bag limit of one sounds like a good idea. Sadly, in some communities, there is a rat bag minority that treat our laws, rebag bag limits and sizes with complete contempt, simply behind... Um, the racism card. Rules only work if they are enforced. It's not hard to see who the rat bag not minority are, and maybe it's time for fisheries to come down hard on these people. That was from Alan and Debbie they were watching last week. Yes, and uh, Andy writes, um, I've noticed that some... Oh, this is another one. This is not to do with stingrays. Well, I'll talk about this one. Okay. Uh, Andy writes, G'day, David. I've noticed that some concrete sampling works have started at the Hastings ramp this Ooh. week. The area... No, oh, sorry, and already, the eye, eye surgery's working well, I can read <laughs> yeah. very well. And already the rumour mill has started churning out stories about the work being done this week, maybe part of some upgrade work which is planned in the not too distant future. If this is true, then it's great to see our launching fees is being put back into improvement works on the facility by the Mornington Shire Council. I doubt they'd be doing anything good with that. <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying, <laughs> can't do it at Rye. Why would they do it at Hastings? The ramp, uh, cheap shot there. This ramp yep. has so much potential and space to add another two ramps with another pontoon. Hastings mm. is an awesome facility with lots of parking, fairly good low tide access, although the ramp could do with being another metre longer on the odd occasion when the tide is dead low. Anyway, let's wait and see on that one. That was from Andy. So there you go. All that. Yeah. Um, Trav, so Stingrays, where do you go with it? Yeah, so it's been really interesting. Um, Sorry, just before I do sure. that, I should remind people, if you'd like yeah. to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria, 3197, or email kramer at ifish.com.au. Now, apologies, Trav, but when I don't do things in the right order, they yeah, yell in my ear. You get in trouble? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Jack is out yeah, there yeah. just yelling in my yeah, ear. Yeah, I didn't yeah. close mail back. Right. Well, there's a couple of blokes sitting next to me going, mate, come yeah. on, what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. Just, they yell at me. Yeah. Seriously uh, yell at yeah. me. Yeah. Um, where do you go? Well, I reckon, I mean, there'd probably be three different opinions on this couch, and mm. I mean, you might have your well, own tre- as well. Trelly's last week was, <laughs> what they taste? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And I can add to that later on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what we don't know at the moment, we, we don't, don't actually know who's mm. fishing for stingrays. Yeah. We're not sure out there, like, which, which um, sections of the community are fishing for them oh, and, and what they're using them for. But what we do know is that those really big, large rays that hang around the wharfs and the jetties, and some of them have got names, mm. and they're so popular throughout Port Phillip mm. Bay and Port Ferry and mm. other places at Queenscliff, that people don't necessarily want them killed. So I can tell you what we're doing is we're looking at all the regs that are in place around Australia in all the other mm. different jurisdictions, and we're going to have a conversation with fishers and the broader community about what we should do with rays, and we're going to ask for ideas and thoughts about regulations. Mm. Um, but it is likely we will do something in this space that tries to find the right balance between protecting the really iconic species but still giving people the ability that want to eat one to be able to eat one. Mm. You would be um, <coughs> hearing from lobby groups, I reckon, right now, because yeah, there were some lobby groups that got onto that subject when they found that carcass, and uh, you, you, you've got to... You know, pay them some due attention as well. Yeah, I'm meeting with a group this Friday yep. uh, down at Queenscliff. And I, I look, I, I'm starting this, I suppose, from the premise of um, I don't expect that we're going to make everyone happy yeah. because there'll probably be really strong arguments at one side for saying protect all rays, and there'll be a strong argument at the other side saying, well, if it's not a sustainability issue, why would you protect them? But, you know, it, without getting too jargony, some of it's about social license. Yeah. And, you know, if the average Victorian out there sees these be- big, beautiful rays around piers and sees them being killed for maybe meat and crab pots or things like this. Well, that's right. I mean, it, I, you know, last week I did did mention that, you know, do mm. they you know, eat well and, yeah. you know, it's not in my territory, so I don't mm. really give a... But, um, you know, when I look mm. at the freshwater scene and I see big Murray cod, mm. you know, I, you, you sort of realise then, well, hang on, bring this back to, to what you do down here as far as the species, and you see these big fish, these big rays, and uh, and like I say, tra- tra- some of these are being cut off just for crab bait mm. and things like that. And I mean, that go and buy with mate if you want crab bait. Mm. You know, don't don't go and sort of um, kill a big stingray. Distri- right? Yeah, kill a big stingray. So yeah, and they're I've great. Got, the kids. I've got no idea about the life cycle of those, but yeah. uh, I mean, that, do you know if they're a, is that an old ray? Those yeah. big ones that you yeah, see. Yeah, some of them can be really really old. I, I mm. don't you know I don't know if it's between like thirty to forty years is from what I've heard, yeah. it's not uncommon for some mm. of those bigger mm. you know, fish. Though. So relating it to cod, boys, would you say a slot limit might be 
you know, so that the, the big ones are one hundred percent protected. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I don't know the, the, the your territory mm. too, too well down here, but that's. Mm. Yeah, obviously, I think I've brought up slot limits. Yeah, I'm, indeed, a, I'm yeah. a massive advocate for yeah. slot limits. Yeah. I think it's good. Plus, yeah. you know, it arises a whole new set of questions. How do you measure a stingray? Now, the chances are you put a size limit on it. Very carefully. That's right. Who's yeah. going to measure it? Too yeah. hard. They yeah. go back anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and look, I think you're right with slot <coughs> limits. I mean, it creates that opportunity for people to see iconic species. At the same time, yeah. it, people that want to eat a fish, mm. take a fish home, yeah. they still mm. get that opportunity. It, it, it wins on both edges. Yeah, so and I, I understand you can't yeah. necessarily introduce slot limits for some species, and, and mm. I'm 100% agree with that as well. But mm. Maybe some limit. of these, maybe some of these obscure. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. well, some can of these I ask you guys a question sure. without notice? And yeah. I'd like to, if you can come up with one each, should be good. Yeah. Uh, is there any other species in Victoria <laughs> that you'd like or think there should be a slot limit on? Mm. Oh, that's a question. No, no, it should be three stun mullet now. But well, well, yeah. no. Is there another species you can think of? The first thing that springs to mind is mm. snapper. Now we've basically got that at the moment. Exactly, yeah, with we've the basically got yeah. it. With well, it. And, and I think no, it's we haven't. Well, you can take kinda. a 12 kilo snapper. Yeah, but, that's but right. But you can yeah. only take a couple. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah that's a couple. <laughs> that's a few. Well, ba basically. <laughs> tell you what, but if I you know go what? out as a couple, I haven't got three people with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If fisheries were to come out tomorrow yeah. and say, you are not allowed to take a snapper over 80 centimetres, yeah. I'd be all for it. Yeah. yeah that's 100%. a classic example. Trelly? Mm. Well, in our freshwater, I mean, your redfin, you can take whatever you want. Your trout are pretty much covered. Your cod are covered now mm. yeah. really well. It, would there be people yeah. arguing that trout should have a slot limit? <laughs> it's funny well. you should say that because <laughs> uh, like, there are people, and big shout out to those people that are uh, putting that argument forward. But there yeah. are a lot. You know, if you get a hundred trout fishermen in a room, you get a hundred different opinions, and yeah. certainly there are some trout fishermen out there at the moment who are advocating strongly yeah. for some waterways to have a slot limit, to leave yeah. the big ten-pound brands in there, yeah. for those fish to be, um, you know, people go and catch them, but mm. be able to take a couple of two to three-pound brands home mm. for the table. Mm. Um, you know, and there, there might be some merit in some of that. Mm. Mm. Interesting, yeah. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're, they're just talking about. Coming up next, this week's hot spots. We'll be back shortly on Talking Fishing. <laughs> Talking fishing. G'day, Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramming. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my boat. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Hello, Richie Minnow here. It's now time for this week's fishing hotspots on Talking Fishing. What the hell just happened? He couldn't help oh. himself, Dave. No. Richie just die? He couldn't help himself. <laughs> Is Richie dead? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, he might have been released. Is there a slot limit on Richie's? I hope the carcass yeah. will right. come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is he on the list? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, he just right. died. Oh, oh, we don't know. Chloe looked to be well. He got caught, but yeah. who caught him? He's about to get lemon squeezed, oh. don't he? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Imagine release yeah. or yeah. felon release. Bloody hell, he's been yeah. around for 90 something uh -huh. episodes. He might come back battered. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, and he left a wife and kids. What? Wow. It's a cruel world out there, Dave. No, that was going to happen. Now, Remember producer did say to us, watch, uh, watch the intro to Hot Spots. So they're going, Bloody hell. I'm oh, shock. Yeah. That's like losing a friend. Yeah. Richie? Yeah. You have to stay tuned to it. He's got his own Facebook page. Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll find hey. out if there's yeah. no activity from hey. Richie. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Shut down tomorrow. Yeah. RIP. Yeah. 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 There you go. All right, let's uh. kick it off the hot spots. And, uh, the number one. Someone said to me during the week, how far do you have to go to catch a whiting? I said, don't go any further than 100 metres offshore. Mm. Seriously. Yeah. There is so many good whiting around at the moment mm. and there's no better place than the Sorrento moorings right now. Get down to Sorrento. There are oodles of King mm. George whiting and they're all big. Mm. It's, uh, it's it's pretty good, isn't it? It's a good season. Yeah, no, it's great. Everyone's catching them. You can't, you can't, <laughs> yeah. Except Trav. You couldn't possibly, you couldn't possibly go. We'll move from Safety Beach, yeah, Trav. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No great. more than 100 metres off Sorrento yeah. Beach. Um, mm. Stick to it because there's plenty of them there. Bit of Burley helps. Uh, the other side of the bay, St. Leonard's on that western side. Not the northern end, boys. The no. western side oh, of Waterfield yeah, Bay. Yeah, yeah. Very there's good. a lovely little town called St. Leonard's. Easy oh, access. It doesn't stop for yeah. whiting these days, does it, St. Leonard's? Mm. No. It does not stop. 
Goes no. all the way through, and so the uh, uh, and boards. the netting's you know going to close pretty soon. Mm. Um, yeah. Corio Bay next year, yeah, it's all over first, Red first of April. Yep. So and it's from the outer part of the bay. So you yeah, know, the the whiting fishing around there. If you've got a if you, if you live around the St Leonard's mm. Cry Bay area, your whiting fishing is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Let's head over to Western Port now and King George whiting again. If you want some King George whiting, some big ones starting to appear in the Warneet Channel, boys. You don't need to travel far from the ramp. The old Warneet Channel. Yep, get in on a high tide, the start of the Ooh. run out. How many good fish do you reckon people travel straight over leaving oh. the Warneet Channel? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too many. Just one of those. Can you get them off the ramp? Oh, you got a little bit. Then, yeah, yeah. you got a little bit down towards the entrance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it's good fishing. Uh, let's head out a bit further towards the western entrance. Sandy Point, just near Balnarring, there is oh. another cracker spot. Fish deep. Yep. Fish deep there, 10 metres, 12 metres mm. for some big King George whiting. So Put a gummy um, bait out too. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And and like we saw old mate um, in, in Catch the Leak earlier on, yeah. got some nice snapper. Yeah, that's right. Around that mm. same yep. area as well. So yeah. uh, We touched on Lake Purrumbeet, boys, but I'd have to say if you're planning a freshwater trip, do yourself a favour, like Molly would say, yeah. and get down to Lake Purrumbeet because those Chinooks are just, they're trophy mm. at the moment, aren't they? Absolutely. And, and the next couple of months, they're just going to come into their own down there. You know. They're Start huge. Of yeah, yeah, absolutely. H- how's the um, water level at Parambit? Uh It's pretty solid. Um, yeah. We know that Tolondo's been um, getting a fair bit of increase. Okay. So there's been some pretty good rains uh, in that area. So it's been, you know, naturally going up. So yeah. I think the ramp's working okay there. So, so did Parambit run out of water when the Chinooks went? And that, was that a water issue? No, Par- 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 Parambit's a crater lake as yeah. well. So, you know, it, it's never going to run out. Okay. I mean, it, it did drop down and we had to put another um, access ramp through a latest yep. property and we uh, did that. But um, no, the, the problem that we had was um, breeding the Chinooks up at uh, Snobs Creek. We had a few production failures. Yeah. Um, but right. it would have been still good to go. Yep. Yeah. Do they only survive? I know we're getting off yeah, topic. We've sure. got one more hot spot to go. Yeah. but. Do they only survive to a certain age and then... Absolutely, then they cark it. Yeah, yeah. Scotty Grove is a fantastic mm. Chinook fisherman, I'll say. Mm. He gets in there and catches these massive Chinooks and, and they might only have, you know, three or four months left in them anyway. And, yeah. uh, and they'll just okay. drop to the bottom of the lake. There you go. Yabby yeah, food. <laughs> the other one yeah. is a Lake Yield and Lucky Last, number six on the hotspot list. Get up there because Trelly, the yellow yep. belly that we're seeing come out of Lake Yield at the moment is just sensational. Been some great fishing up there in the last few months, and we haven't seen winter come. So we had a we've, we're having a mild winter at the moment, or, or leading yeah, to. Yeah. So it's going to still fish mm. really well. Some great mm. big. We're also having a mild time. autumn. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. No, we are. We're at the yeah, same yeah, time as your wild, yeah, yeah. mild winter, we're having yeah. a mild, yeah. mild autumn as well. Yeah. Yeah. But it's I great. heard that on the news. Yeah. Yeah. It's that great. In fact, I heard on the time, news that winter doesn't it start till yeah. June 1 this year. They yeah, put it back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. But you, no, but you could be trolling the autumn. I mean, yeah. You could have, have a stump jumper out one side yeah. and you could have a Tassie devil out the other because it's that really good... What about an old mate? An old mate. Throw a few things out there. Married. It's a good crossover an old mate. Exactly. All right, there you Get go. Let, uh, <laughs> can we? Okay, that's hot spots. I hope yeah. you catch a fish on. Um, let's go back to Tolondo. Sure. So Tolondo was in the news for many years about yeah. lack of water <laughs> yeah, yeah. and lack of fish. Now, mm. thank God, a little bit of water went in at yep. that start because that was the saviour. Yeah. It, it could Got have gone belly up. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. big browns have survived mm. through the, the probably two years of drought yeah. where that water got quite warm. You guys mm. were monitoring mm. it. How is it fishing right now? Look, I, I caught up with Trevor Holmes uh, yesterday, mm. and uh, Trevor's down here, and he's a legend of uh, of Tolondo and, and Stocky and Chris Spence. If you're all watching, you know, big shout out, lads. Looking forward to catching up soon. It's uh, you know, it's at thirty percent at the moment, Tolondo. Mm. Um, I know that Stocky, your local legend up there, is catching some very big red fin. Well, I saw one on Facebook the other day, yeah. forty nine centimeters. Yeah, that's I mean, that, that's an that's incredible yeah. red fin. Because we, oh. we're we're about to do a, a red fin competition at Fisheries. We're going to say, send us a pic of a fifty centimeter ready, because we're gonna, yeah. we're calling that the you know that's the Barrel. That's the, the that's barrel. That's, barrel. That, that's, that's, barrel. that's, that's the yeah, exactly. That's, the, that's, that's the meter. Yeah, yeah, that's the meter yes. barrel. So, so would you go to Tolondo for that? Is there anywhere yeah. fishing better for reddies than Tolondo? Oh, yeah. Parambit's still very good. Yeah. So par- and look, they've been getting some good ones also out of um, uh, what's that place near Rushworth, Ranga Basin. Ranga Basin. Yeah, still getting some good fish in there. Yeah. But Tolondo at the moment, thirty percent. Those browns have been in there now. You know, since the rain came back, you know, two thousand eleven, two thousand and twelve. Yeah. Been stocking it since then, mm. seven years of growth in there, truckloads of food. This June, July, August at Tolondo, I, I will be seeing real trophy brown trout. Yep. 
Yeah. Are they right. nearing the end of their lifespan? No, no, browns will live on for a long time. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah 20, 30 years. Yeah, so okay. the rainbows we'll get a few years out of. Yeah. Um, and if you want to go up there, now the browns are, for me, too hard to catch. Uh, so we also put rainbows in there and put some younger, smaller browns in. But the big browns, yeah. um, you know, they you know, are very, very tough fish to catch because they're very smart. But you can still always go up there and get a feed, good feed of reddies. Uh, so there's some smaller rainbows getting around and yep. I know, again, look, I'll give Trevor Holmes a plug. He works it very well and does a great guiding mm. um, trip out there and uh, you know, it's a great place to fish. Have you ever caught like a redfin out of Tolondo? Yeah, I have. Oh, I have? Yeah, yeah. yeah Are I was you one of the rare species you caught? Yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> no it was just that was you know, the fourth, fourth left on the list, that one. Um, but uh, yeah, I was fishing for a big brown trout with a mud under a bubble and uh, caught a redfin. Still counts. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Sat around a fire that night and said, oh, okay, around, around the fire. Who caught one today? Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've got a, dile- a direct line to the Minister for Water. Uh, I'll, I'll Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. only taking the you know what. Yeah, um, anyway, um, what, what does it t- what does it take for more w- water to go into Tolondo? So very, very quickly, you've yeah, got twenty yeah. seconds to answer. Absolutely, there's a trigger point for Rocklands Reservoir, and when it gets to that trigger point, water will then uh, be allocated down to Tolondo. Uh, look, I was hearing some good noises before summer uh, about w- more water being available, so we just watch this space for, at the moment. Trav, a massive thank you for coming in tonight. Thanks for having me in. No, it's, it's great good. To it's be always here. good. And yeah. I know we pump you for information yeah. and it gets uh, pretty tight. But anyway, thank you very, very much, the Executive Director of Fisheries Victoria, Travis Dowling. That's it for Talking Fishing. We hope you enjoyed the show. This was our last live show for the season, but a repeat of this series will play every Tuesday night right through until August when we are back with a new series for a new fishing season. Until we see you again on the first Tuesday in August on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son.